Hi, I'm Paul Guthridge, National Director of Initiatives of Change UK, and I want to share with you some of the thoughts that have been developing across the fellowship around our evolving vision. Who we are, what we are, how we do, and how we're going to get there. So I want to walk through very quickly a presentation that I talked to the National Outreach Meeting about the other day, so that everybody across our fellowship and those that might well be interested can check in on. So number one, Here's the house, and the house is a descriptive of who we are at IFC and where we focus and what we do. Number one, we're a faith-based organisation. Everybody's got faith in something, so it's nothing scary, but we root ourselves in a set of beliefs which are inclusive, not exclusive. The next thing we do is out of that faith base, we say, how are we going to manifest? How are we going to live? Well, we're going to be honest, we're going to be unselfish, we're going to be loving, and we're going to be pure in our motivations, in our actions, and in our perspective towards the other. Number three, what areas of focus do we have as an organisation? Well, we operate in three areas. Number one, ethical leadership. Number two, sustainable communities. And number three, in trust building. So how do we go about doing the work? Well, as an organisation, we have a real strong focus on our quiet time. This is where we sit back individually and collectively and really connect to the heart. So it operates at an individual level and we share it collectively. Let's take time to listen. When we listen, we often get inspiration on the who and the how of where we focus in our three visionary areas. Who do we accompany? Who do we walk with through the journey to see those things happen individually and in teams? Um, what training do we need internally and externally in order to see these project focal areas work? And finally, therefore, what projects, what structures do we need to put in place in order to see those three areas of vision taking place? I suggest that we need a big title over the top of that. Why? Because we believe that all change takes place, first of all, from the inside and then it works on the outside. And it takes place one step at a time. So as an organisation, from the small in the heart to the big out there in the world, we believe that change will take place as we all take one step. And finally, how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to do it because we're inspired to build trust across the world's divide. So that's the kind of core of the who and the how. As we move on, we can dive into things a little bit deeper. And what I've heard across the fellowship is the fact that we've got some focal areas. Um, our focal areas are around ideological extremism, what does it mean to see European and UK unity at this time, what dialogue do we need to facilitate for that to happen, and what environmental factors are driving some of the conversations, whether it be um, war uh, or whether it be climate emergency, which drives people across borders. There is so much behind that, and we can unpack that at another time, but I think as we focus in on these particular areas, we are going to be able to create the kind of partnerships and the sort of work that makes a, a quantifiable difference in the world around us. Um, so the Take One Step campaign focuses on three areas. What does it mean for us to take steps at an international level? So as IFC UK, what relationships do we need to strengthen with IFC Europe, all the different people within Europe? As the UK is stepping back from Europe, we're going to step into Europe and work with our brothers and sisters and our friends and our colleagues across the continent. What relational connections do we need to strengthen and develop with India, with America, with Australia, with all sorts of other areas that we work in? At a national level, what does it mean to create the kinds of relational um, uh, the relationships and strength across England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales? in order for us to see the United Kingdom operate not as one homogenous mass. We celebrate diversity, but actually what's it mean for us to move together to a common goal of human flourishing and trust building? And finally, at the personal level, how do we become the kinds of people from the inside out that enable us to be that effective mechanism for change across the world's divides? So we're going to create partnerships and you can see those there with all sorts of organisations and institutions um, because we're better together than separate. Um, we need to ask ourselves a question, we've got all these assets, how are we going to steward them, how are we going to look after them to fulfil the vision? And I think we've got um, a number of things to look at. Um, one of the things that um, is sometimes more challenging for us to talk about in the charitable sector is how we use money. 
And I wanted to want to focus in on three areas, property investments and dividends. Um, property, we own a lot around the country. Um, investments, we've been given a lot to invest. And dividends is like when you invest something, it's the savings that come off the top. And we have lived by and large from our dividends. We've done our vision by and large based out of our interest from our savings. Plus we've dipped into our investments. I reckon with a clever little look, and I'm really grateful for the trustees getting behind this, that we can see these three areas used even more effectively to fund uh, the vision that we have been given. So what three areas are we gonna really look to invest in over the next what, um, over the next three years? On top of what we are already doing, we're not taking anything away, this is adding to what we've been doing, we're gonna invest more in accompaniment in regions. What does that look like for Manchester and Sheffield and Nottingham and Oxford and parts of Scotland and Wales? For it to be, the vision to be decentralized and money and resource to go into those regions. Training and retreats, what does it look like for us to increase in our training budget? What does it look like to facilitate times when we can, as small groups and individuals, take, one, take, um, take time to step out of the busyness of delivery to listen, tune in and connect once again? We need a big campaign to push this forward uh, across the fellowship and into all the partnerships we've got. What extra areas of outreach do we need to look into? What does it mean for us to reach more into Scotland and into Northern Ireland and into other parts of our nation at this time, away from London, where actually so much is going on? And finally, how about us as individuals? In our quiet times, we get some inspiration, we connect with other people. What kind of budget is available for us at an individual level to be IFCers, people who take one step to reach out to the other? All this will cost an extra 2.1% if you're interested in the figures. There's your figure. So we're looking to launch this at the National Fellowship Weekend. So we've got six months to listen and talk even more deeply across the fellowship to make sure it happens. Why? Because we're looking for four things. Number one, a focus that the trustees can support. Tick, they're really up for it. Number two, a focus that the trustees can empower the executive and the team to facilitate. Tick, they're saying yes to that as well. Number three, a focus that gives us one voice. We stand for something and we can go for something. Tick, I reckon we can get there. And finally, a focus that we can liberate finance for. I'm happy to do the number crunching with the team. Um, what I'm interested in is in us, each one of us, being able to take one step and build some sort of house for the country that we live in.